Hello everyone, my name is Octavio Arriaga, and alongside with Matias Valenegro Toro, we wrote the paper on supervised difficulty estimation with action scores. Our method would be evaluating the difficulty and possible biases of machine learning models. It would do so without any external supervision, those no labels would be required, and does the name unsupervised. And our method does not necessarily involve the modification of the model. That means that no extra layers, for example, in neural networks or no extra weights would be required. It's not limited also to supervised learning. And again, it's not limited to images or to neural networks. So possible applications of our method would be the following. We would be able to obtain a difficult score of samples, and that can tell us whether or not these, there were incorrect labels in the training data set, or maybe that there are certain unseen poses that we would have to our training data set in order to eventually classify certain objects. And another application would be to find possible biases. So maybe we find that a class has very similar backgrounds, and thus when a new class comes that has a similar background, it would be misclassified. Again, our method is not necessarily limited to images or to neural networks. So this is just an example of how our method works. And we show you here some real results that we obtained on Cypher 10. On the top row, we get to see the hardest samples to learn. And on the bottom row, we get to see the easiest samples to learn. So on the bottom row, we show that the neural network learn to classify very easily brown horses and red cars. And at the top row, for example, on image B, we found uh, incorrect label on the Cypher 10 data set. So the image is that of a frog, but the actual true label is that of a cat. Also, those other images on the top row indicate that there are objects that are located in very strange poses or be very strange backgrounds. And the object located in image A, which is that of a dog, was mostly classified as a horse given the fact that it, that it shares the same background and pose of the horse. So how does our method work? So given a loss function L and a model M with three parameters theta, we define the action of a sample X with labels Y in the following way, in which little m here represents the current epoch and big N represents the total number of epochs or total number of optimization steps. So our action really is the accumulated loss over all epochs. So our hypothesis is that the difficulty is proportional to our action value. The name action was chosen given its functional similarity to the action in physics and that a physical system would follow the path of stationary action. So here on the left side, we get to see the easiest samples to learn, which are those that involve two and six. And on the right side, we get to see the dynamics of that learning procedure. So the action score at every epoch. We get to see that the neural network learn fairly quickly to classify correctly those images. And next, we show you those samples with the highest accumulated action scores. And we get to see that the samples lo are located in very strange poses, and also that sometimes the true value or the true label does not necessarily indicate the actual image. An interesting aspect that you could find on the right image in which we show the dynamics of the learning or the action score at every epoch is that the neural network learned at certain epochs to classify it correctly, but then it eventually forgot that part and in, misclassified it incorrectly. Now we show a TSN embedding of the penultimate layer of a pre-trained or of our trained neural network. And we get to see that the hardest samples shown with the big images are located at the borders of the clusters. Now we also repeat the same experiments, but with another data set. Uh, specifically the fashion MNIST data set, and we get to see that the easiest samples were mostly bags. 
and that the learning dynamics, again, repeat from the MNIST dataset in which the samples were quickly learned. Now we get to see those samples that were more difficult to learn. And you can see again that the labels might not necessarily correspond to the actual images. So for example, this image would correspond that of a code, of code but it's very difficult to see whether or not that's a code. And on the right side, we get to see again the dynamics and we see an absurd similar dynamics as on MNIST, mostly that at some point the neural network seems to have learned to classify it correctly, but then it eventually forgets it. And also you get to see that the neural network is having more difficulty as it's progressing in its number of epochs. We show again the TSD embedding of the penultimate layer and we get to see shown in the big images the hardest examples that are located between the clusters. So another question that we had was whether or not our method would hold on more complicated tasks. Therefore, we decided to test it on object detectors, which are trained with multiple losses. And one of those losses would be the regression of the bounding boxes, uh, mostly using the hover loss, and the classification loss, which is a normal categorical cross-entropy. Also, the classification loss is divided between positive and negative, in which positive are those boxes that actually contain a class, and negative those boxes that are classified as background classes. We, the results that we're going to show are on the BOC 2007 validation data set using the single shot multi-box detector model. So here we show you those samples that obtain Again, the, mo the hardest action scores or the highest action scores located at the top row and the easy examples located at the bottom row for the localization loss. So you get to see from the top row that the images that were most difficult to, to detect the, the, or to regress the localization loss are those of very small objects that are located at the background. And also on image G, you get to see that are those images that contain a lot of bounding boxes, for example, those of the bottles. And on the bottom row, you get to see that the easiest samples to learn were those in which the object is enter, center and it's only one single object. Now the bottom row here would show the positive loss for the classification. So you get to see the hardest positive losses, and mostly you see that the objects are located in very strange poses or that are very occluded by fences or by cars. And on the top row, you get to see those negative losses. So those background bounding boxes that were incorrectly classified as containing something, mostly because the scenes seem to be very cluttered. So future conclusions and, and possible work that we would like to do eventually would be that we estimated and the difficulty and biases of models and our method did not require any external supervision. It does not require any modification to the model and we presented results in multiple tasks and models. So our future would, would include that we would like to apply it in an unsupervised setting. So right now we train mostly on supervised methods or tasks, so such as classification or object detection. And also a future work would be that we would like to test on multiple tasks, so post estimation and image segmentation. And we would like to test using different models such as ResNet or DesNet. So thank you very much for listening and please feel free to ask us directly any question. Thanks.